These cars are completely unremarkable. They don't have booster rockets. They won't take a hairpin at 400 miles an hour. They're not indestructible. Nothing remarkable in that. They're no different than any real car, which is what makes them so remarkable. Made it easy for everyone. My big discovery in that game was that you could hold the button down to pat the soil. <laughs> right, just going so slow. <laughs> wow. It was a hardcore yeah. 10 minutes of Viva Pinata. <laughs> that should be an achievement right there. Like, why they, I, you know, I don't know why they did that. I, I don't understand why you just don't start with soil. It made no yeah. sense to me. Yeah. It's just like this yeah. really boring beginning of the game. Yeah. yeah really but cool one of the dragon colors is only on cracked earth. So then you get screwed. Because you make all the soil, oh, they're like, oh, I want the golden dragon. Worst ones are when you start cracking out on the flutterscotch. Oh, yeah, I did those. It's those like, are, yeah, yeah, it felt like Brando and Apocalypse now, you know? I'm like, ah, <laughs> now I have to get this color. And it was like four hours later. Angela actually came in, she's like, just leave the butterfly, go do something <laughs> else or whatever. I'm like, but I need, look at the book, I need. It sort of starts with even Pinata, which I think is a, a really interesting jumping off point because the fear is that the game that you guys have all worked so hard on, World of Warcraft, is a game that makes you gaming, a gaming monogamous. So what else are you guys playing right now in addition to World of Warcraft? I'm playing Guitar Hero 2 right now. I just fi finished uh, Rainbow Six Vegas, was uh, another recent game I played. Gears of War. I finished Crackdown, really enjoyed that. It was kind of, it wasn't very deep, but it was uh, pretty exciting. Uh, Guitar Hero 2, same thing. Um, I just finished God of War 2. I'm almost done with Zelda Twilight Princess. Um, played a ton of Viva Pinata when that was out. I'm getting ready to play Guitar Hero 2, but I'm holding off. Also, I've been downloading some stuff on Steam, so I've been playing a new pop cap game, Peggle. Been playing a little bit of God of War 2, been playing some uh, DS games like Mario on the DS. Uh, been enjoying that a lot. Uh, gotten a chance to play a little bit of Viva Pinata, so all games that I enjoy quite a bit. I also come back to uh, Civ 4 a lot. I've been really hardcore in Civ 4. Um, I just got an Xbox 360, so I'm kind of playing a lot of games on that right now. I do the dumbest things for achievements. The first thing I do with a game is research what to do, and Guitar Hero 2 I was stressing out because you had to get this achievement for saying no to playing an encore, but then I didn't know if that meant that I couldn't go back and play the encore because I also you know, wanted to play the encore, so yeah, yeah I'm an achievement whore. Someone like Brian Intahar, who's one of the previews editors at EGM, or Shane Bettenhausen, who's the executive editor, they're like, you know, we want to play WoW, but we're just afraid we won't have time for anything else yeah. then. But, I mean, that's not that's not the case? Well, I, I think of WoW as, sure, that it's a game that never ends, and we're kind of conditioned that games are going to end. So people, like, kind of get in that mode where I just want to finish, want to finish, want to keep on playing. But I think MMOs are a little more like, I don't know, like the internet? But it's something, you know, if you do a little more casually, you have time to do other things also. I don't need to play WoW all the time. It's actually, this, it's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there hopefully for a very long time. So I've gone on and played some other games too and try to manage that time. I'm there for our raid nights or for our uh, lunchtime runs and things like that. Lunchtime runs? Oh yeah? Yeah. We do our quick lunchtime runs. We get together on uh, Mondays right before our lead meeting and we do like a, you know, some coil fang instance or some hawk and dune instance. We try to get it done in an hour. Yeah. And I'll come in like at the end of lunch, like, hey Shane, you know, how's the schedule looking for whatever? And then he'll, you know, turn around and answer me real professionally. And then I'll realize their whole group just wiped out because he's playing the priest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta heal you, him. You guys wipe, you make the game. Shouldn't you just be able to, to cruise through everything? You know, what I, you know what everything does. We could do whatever we want. I could spawn a hundred on Nixia's, you know, and kill them all in one mm -hmm. shot, but it, it's not. It's not fun. There's, that's not the game at that point. There's nothing like just you know playing legitimately, seeing how things actually go. That's that's where the real fun is for us. Now, so you're rating. What are you? What are you guys? What are you rating right now? What are you working on in the game? I've been doing a lot of Karazhan lately. Not the most uber and <coughs> epic thing in the game, but uh, you know we have a, a little anonymous guild. When I, I started playing WoW, we decided to go anonymous. Just 
underground, no one knew who we were, and uh, we've been having a blast in Karazhan. That's what we're doing right now. To continue talking about the player base, I guess, uh, part of the reason with, I guess, the Chromagus encounter is a good jumping off point, because you could do Chromagus in the doorway, but like the first videos that would come out would have Chromagus run down to the ramp, and then people would duck the ramp, and then like hug that ledge up top, mm -hmm to avoid line of sight, you need to tank them a certain way, and then you have your other tanks, you know, run in, and this was all because of these videos that surfaced. Like, do you guys watch these videos? But Not only do we watch the videos, but we watch the guilds rating. Um, we can watch real time as they're doing it, and we often do that to make sure everything's working. We call it WoW TV. Yeah, WoW TV, <laughs> put it up on a second screen. Um, actually, the earliest Crow Magus fights weren't even taking place in either of those spots you mentioned. Um, because of the magical, you know, this is a spot where we line of sight killed something factor that takes place. Guilds were doing these tremendous hunter pulls all the way to the fire moss spot, right where Broodlord um, guards that area. Um, and it was a tremendous pain for them. It would take 10, 15 minutes to get the pull right and get the, you know, get Chromagus all the way to that spot. And then they, they soon discovered, you know, the doorway, the ramp, all these other things. So. Yeah, we definitely watch. We pay attention to everything. To step away from World of Warcraft for a second and talk about some of the places where you guys have come from. And you two, on either side of me, were big EQ guys. And you guys played together way back when in a guild called Legacy of Steel. There's a lot about EQ that was truly brilliant. And I, I think it's one of the greatest games of all time. I, I would put it in my top three games of, of all time. And there was a lot of EverQuest that was just fun and fight in spite of itself and would never work in... Uh, today, you know, in today's gaming scene, you just couldn't get away with some of the stuff that the game does. But um, then there's a tremendous amount of nostalgia behind that game. But it was this golden period, um, and you got to know who everybody was because it was a much smaller community. It was very competitive. Um, they didn't have the idea of instancing, so you were competing for spawns, and I don't think WoW players can really relate to that. Imagine there's only one on Ixia up on the server, and when Tuesday the patch happens, there's one on Ixia, and the first guild to get to her and to kill it gets the loot. We talked about we talked about older games, and you two talked about EQ. What about Shane and Tom? What about? Well, my background for MMOs comes from Ultima Online. Uh, not only did I play the game for many years, I also worked on the game for many years. So um, I, I definitely had a lot of you know fond memories of the, the Wild West that was UO when it first came out. So there were a lot of crazy lessons to be learned from that game. Um, a lot of fun that we had, you know, back back in the day. I was I guess kind of earned myself a reputation in that game as being a, a player killer. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played UO, so I guess for my own edification, I'd like to know what some of these lessons are that you're uh, picking up from UO. There's a lot of things you can do. Things you can manipulate. Um, for example, they'll have like a garden out there with the cabbages and carrots in the garden. You you can bring your horse there and feed them cabbages and carrots and it makes them feel good. Um, there is a character in the, a class in the game or a type of skill is a poisoner. We have a programmer on our team who played UO who would go out to these fields and poison all the carrots and cabbages and you get random people come along to feed their horses. They'd feed their horse, their horse would take three steps and then die. You gotta understand the way that game works. So it's free PvP. Any place, you can kill anybody except for in the cities where the guards will kill you. But, and then when you kill them, you can just loot them. Take so everything they So all their stuff, yeah. like literally all their stuff. And they will be naked, resurrected, and all they have is the stuff they banked. So if they didn't bank a full set of second gear, then they they're now no naked. Gear. They have zero, <laughs> nothing. Like inside the city, like yeah, at the forge, is where everyone hang out and people would be bidding on things. And um, someone might screw up and do an aggressive action and the guard would kill them and their body would be lying there. And there's like 20 people around it. And you, you would actually see him get looted. You would see the graphic of his like shirt goes to this guy, his pants go to this guy. And it's like these vultures. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's like all of his stuff just A clothed poofs. person and yeah. then a naked person. Yeah. <laughs> so the any times a naked guy walked up to you, I mean, maybe in real life this happens too, but you kind of took a step away from him. You're like, what's up with that dude? You've been to San Francisco, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, this is not unusual. You yes. always like my walk out of the tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Until next time. Yeah, thanks so much, though. But, but thank you very much. Yes, for, thank yeah, you. it was yeah. our pleasure. Thank you, guys. It was fun. Good times.
初めて見たりとか結構僕自身もあこんなのあったのかってあったんですけどあのー、なんかで読んだことがあったかなスコープあのあのなんていうかなこう任天堂らしい発想なんかこうあんねんけどもそれをあえて形にするその辺でこの距離をこう見たからどうなんだっていうそういうところのその。子供が喜びそうなのを大人が考えるっていうでもちろんおもちゃはそうなんですけど結構こう常にこうありそうでないものを形にしてたっていうそういうところが僕はすごいあの形といいフォルムがすごい未来的なのにすごいどんくさいっていう昔の独特なあれが僕はすごく一番印象的な実物初めて見たんですけどとてもすげえ任天堂の歴史で古いとかって思いました。はツイスターのツイスターっていうの分かるかな、うん、ツイスターっていう昔のゲームの,あのフォントとあとアイコンなんか人がこうやってるわ、うん、もうそれ T シャツにしたい。ライオンの顔を打つやつ、まあ、おもちゃとして面白いプラス当時それを買ってきてそれまあ家族で遊んだり家に置いとくのにあのおもちゃっていうのはすごいあの面白い以外に当時の日本の家族に。すごい精神的な満足を与えるおもちゃじゃないかなそれが今ではちょっとあの古臭い感じやけど当時それはすごいいいおもちゃやったんじゃないかな。
ドンキーコング、ドンキーコングジュニア、ドンキーコング3、あの話題のゲームが T シャツに、ザ・キング・オブ・ゲームズ、秘密のパウボックス、上質なプリントデザイン、任天堂株式会社購入。ゲームズが送るドンキーコングサンブサーク好評発売中
For the uninitiated, this is Choniki Great Brother. This is actually a fighting game based on the popular in Japan, somewhat uh, 2D side-scrolling shooter series starring big oily gay men. Fantastic. I prepared a statement. Oh, please. <laughs> Let me take my penis out of my pants. That's that's Sean Baby's joke. He was saying that when we heard we were doing Choniki. You can't just steal his material like that. Joke steal. Show me the proof. You're fucking Carlos Mencia <laughs> over here. <laughs> Right. Black people can swim as well as Mexicans! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression. Thank you. I stole it from Carlos Mencia. I think my guy just grew a dong. Did you see that? Hold on. I think my guy just grew a dong. <laughs> Alright, so you got some choices here. I'm gonna be the pleasure cruise ship. <laughs> yoo <-hoo -hoo. laughs> I like this game because instead of saying oh, finish him, it. it says, uh, Climb inside him with your love touch. <laughs> okay. Look at I'm a pleasure cruise yeah, wow. covered with naked men. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> like, that's like working backwards from the gayest thing ever. Are you Rosie O'Donnell's, <laughs> is that Rosie O'Donnell's cruise ship? Yeah. <laughs> well, you well, threw, I threw one at him. threw a naked I dude. threw a gay guy at him. Whoa. Oh, you did, and I tried that again. Oh, shit, gay beam. Okay, it made you dizzy. <laughs> Why am I so gay? Father, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, I gotta say, Crispin's character, a little Look gay. He's his... only got pose and makes yourself nice. dizzy in his moves. This game has all the classic moves. Yeah, the gay pleasure cruise is kind of a strange character, though. I think yes. they were like, like, should we just have two guys having Whoa, sex wait, as a character? Check out this like, background. Nah, it's not quite gay enough. Wait, what if a, we had? We're in a field full of daisies. Look at this. And guys giant, prancing. Giant, giant prancing fairies. fairies. <laughs> <laughs> and purple thongs. There's very little question as to how gay this game is. I mean, like, what are you talking about? This game's gay. <laughs> and that's not a derogatory term. It's like, just, you don't see how I don't this can be construed as being somewhat gay? Uh, <laughs> he's, why is my guy any different than, like, uh, Ken? <laughs> this guy's muscly. That's right, that's right. Oh, oh sweet! Hit you with my gaydar. <laughs> they gave me a gay, gay you can. My guy has like 37,000 moves. This game is awesome. <laughs> yeah, why are we playing this? This is the best game we've ever played. <laughs> Play I'm like getting your moves. <laughs> it's over, Crispin. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Teach him the joys of pleasure. Oh, tickle him. <laughs> oh, gayality. <laughs> I'm gonna be this blue dildo man thing. Right. I'm gonna be the. No, wait, uh, I think I want to be Cobra Commander. I'm gonna be the gay dude sitting in half of the moon. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> Don't ask. Just okay, okay. Let's paint a uh, rich narrative. Well, look at this background. Let's go down. This is the ballroom dancing <laughs> round. Let's go down. Put yourself under my yeah. lap. At I this dare. point, like, if you're, if you see your parents walk in, you're playing this game. What do they think? You know? <laughs> I don't think that's a matter of thinking. I think it's just. Well, you know what the hardest part is of playing Joe Niki? Telling your parents you're gay. That's right. God, I just want to sit under this giant purple man bobbing up and down. <laughs> Yeah, this might be the best game we've ever played ever. Yeah, quite easily. I mean, a, there's so many moves. And I gotta say, it probably isn't even the gayest game we played on Broken Pixels. <laughs> no, I think that was an Ecrodesia. Yeah. <laughs> or as it's known now, Escape from Bug Island. Escape from Bug Island. <laughs> just, uh, just doing a little stretches. Stretch those hamstrings. 
So you're like in a moon-shaped bathtub. <laughs> yeah, one move I have kind of looks like a pooping maybe. I'm just gonna do it again. Okay, see if we can do it. Because I think that's a no-no during gay sex. <laughs> like, I really had a nice time having sex with you, my gay friend, but except for when you pooped all over me. Uh, some people are into that. A uh, Germans. Yeah. Sorry for the poo. I'm not. I'm not condoning that kind of behavior. It's just, you know, culturally different. Cross-cultural value judgments like that shouldn't be made. And I don't know. Did the did the guys who made this know what was going on? That's the thing about Japan. You don't know. This could be their idea of awesome. <laughs> They're like, Whoa, we have like, a, a gay train, train with a face <laughs> jerking himself off in a Car cart of carrying fruit. a load of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a pagoda with gay Elvis and his head detaches. This is your idea of a hot sexual fantasy. <laughs> well, come to the right place. The design sheet for this game was two guys having sex <laughs> and a list of adjectives chosen from random. <laughs> Every time you throw a super, you get really dizzy and have to take a nap. <laughs> I think it's some sort oh. of comment on the gay community. Yeah. You looked pretty good there for a while. Until you like walked into his uh, gazer. Yeah, <laughs> like, look at that gay laser. I, I don't want to enter it, but I have to. Oh, dude, you're oh, still in it. Me. All right. This is the rubber match. Let's decide that whoever it loses takes this a whole is new meaning in this game, the rubber right. match. <laughs> Unprotected match. <laughs> rubber match. <laughs> We had, hey, hey, Chris, what was that bet we had on that round? I don't remember. I believe you said whoever loses is really gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the loser gets a hand job from me. You know what? I got two hands. Bring on the winner, too, boys. <laughs> Tacky yet unrefined. You know the problem I have with those hot pants is like when they're on a hot chick, super hot. But all it takes is just one tiny slip over the edge of not super hot and your ass is 19 feet wide. As I was alluding to earlier, <laughs> I spent a few days staying at the Hooters Hotel and Casino in gorgeous Las Vegas last year. Nice. I was very excited about it and uh, I got to say, whole hotel it's themed a whole hotel Hooters. Hooters themed and it didn't, didn't quite live up to my expectations. Like uh, I thought they yeah. might have the hottest Hooters chicks in the whole country there. You'd think. Instead, a lot of them are like 50-something old like Chinese ladies wearing Hooters outfits. But I mean, Crispin will vouch for this. That's kind of your type. You have <laughs> insane taste in women. I, okay, I do think Martha Stewart's hot. <laughs> yeah. that see, that's what I mean. But that doesn't mean I want to see her in a Hooters outfit. Okay, okay. Fair enough. All right, so... Well, what do you want to see her in then? Something she knit herself? Yeah, Fridays? <laughs> Just a bunch of homemade frosting? <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, oh so we are uh, drunk driving our way to the latest Hooters. <laughs> Woo! Well, I okay. had a great time in Hooters. We just, we just left South, <laughs> San Padre Island. Uh, Spring break was great. <laughs> Woo! What's going on? Do we need to take your kids? Yeah, why? what's happening? <laughs> the, the control is not what you would expect. <laughs> there that, may be a that's drunk, your excuse? There may be a drunk driving simulation already built in. <laughs> Wait you control this shit, dude. It's, it is not controlled the way that you might expect. Just let the guardrails take Whoa. it home, man. Yeah. <laughs> Soundtrack's pretty good. Uh, really hungry for wings. So we're gonna go to Hooters, we're all gonna get laid. You know, they really should have combined this game and the guy game into, into one, one title. If, if you get the nuclear fire <laughs> hot wing plate, they have to give you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the contract of Hooters. My cousin used to work there, I fucked it. I didn't want to do it! It just, I didn't want her to get fired. That's a negative stereotype <laughs> about my people from the South there, Sean. Like, just because people in the South uh, may be related. I understand. All I'm right. from the woods too, dude. All right. I grew up in Florida, which I think is where Hooters is from, because it just seems like that's yeah, where it it's seems from. Like but there's all these Hooters knockoffs. Really? But they're called, like, there's one called Jugs. Have you been? <laughs> no. Seriously, it's called Jugs? There's one called Melons. <laughs> no uh, way. There's one called Tits. Really? <laughs> yeah. You've been to Tits? No, I haven't been to Tits. Explosive you didn't go Tits? has the best burgers. <laughs> well, fuck that. For the Volvos? Fuck. You know who has the worst chili, though? It's yeast infections. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Jacksonville.
<laughs> Welcome to Jacksonville. All right, so now we get to go to Hooters and, and order. So uh, you, I think the one on the right was the mother of the two. Greetings the from Jacksonville. <laughs> How nice of them to send my, my results on this postcard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You really won't get that in the mail. <laughs> Congratulations on finishing the race. Please wait here for four to six days <laughs> while you wave to the mail, though, right? <laughs> So we visited our first Hooters in Jacksonville. That was pretty exciting. I, I really like the wings here. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, are you hearing the soundtrack? It's good. Yeah, I'm hearing it. I think it's Dio. I'm living it. Legacy uh, of yeah. slavery in the deep south, yeah! <laughs> All right, I'm starting to see what you meant Get about the Get the tatas in your food! Like, uh, it, so simula good. it simulates a five ring minimum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, covered bridge. That's, that's beautiful. Quaint. Quaint. Oh, this Hooters is old-fashioned. That's very realistic AI. Sobering up bonus. <laughs> Driving home at 2 a.m. simulator. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! You should be dead! <laughs> now nah, you're fine. Does That's it even fine. have a damage? Like, does that do anything to your car? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Mike, there are taxi cabs in the Deep South. Please! <laughs> yeah, like, there's like on. one cab in the city I came from. Seriously. <laughs> nobody knows how to get yeah, over. Yeah, I need a cab out 14 miles out of town at a farm. <laughs> I'm uh, having like marker 14. Turn left at the cow. <laughs> How many beers have you had, sir? We're not sending the cab unless you have at least a case. I, I had 37 beers. <laughs> What's your body weight? I don't know, about 480. 480? You don't live in the Get south. Get in the fucking car and drive yourself. <laughs> Sober piece of shit. <laughs> it's up on cinder blocks. <laughs> What do you think came first? Was it the game or the license? Was there this driving game and they decided they... Well, what came first really was the uh, you know the phenomenon of a bunch of drunk dudes <laughs> getting in like an old 70s muscle car and drunkenly driving to Hooters from town to town. Oh, well, who hasn't done that? This is a simulation of a real event. Yeah. That's how I went to college. We're sitting around one day. What do you guys want to do? Who's fucking drive to Hooters and then a second Hooters? <laughs> Get all fucked up in Hooters. <laughs> Also, see also Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it a Hooters road trip. I love you guys. Okay, back to the Hooters casino. Uh, oh yes, it's impressive. Your room at the at the hotel looks like a Hooters. Like you got shit on the walls. I had like a, a Marlin and like a lacrosse racket <laughs> on my wall in my hotel room. And you got like beer, like bar stools. Now I've seen wow. everything. Floors covered in uh, peanut shells. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Very classy. Uh, this looks like uh, power slide uh, across the uh, finish line. <laughs> Mobile, Alabama, perhaps. <laughs> oh, what, 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 what impressive a metropolis place. have we arrived at? Hi, y'all. Welcome to Georgia. How are you doing, sugar? <laughs> I like how she welcomes to Georgia wearing a Phoenix, Arizona shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, remember? Oh, replay. Watch this. Oh, oh so replay another awesome. game. <laughs> Here's what you could be playing if you spent more than ten dollars on a game, you <laughs> fucking idiot. 